Greetings and blessings in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Uh, welcome to our current episode, maybe our last episode, of War in Heaven. Uh, this is, I think, our 15th, 16th session. We're going to get right into it. Uh, this won't be a very long episode. It's mostly an update of some really uh, critically important, uh, very inspiring and uh, visible things that are happening. Um, the title of this session is Assembling the Body, that's us, for Dominion. We're going through a lot on planet Earth, aren't we? Uh, and we watch the, this war going on in heaven being waged out in front of us with all the different components, the snake bite, uh, the globalists, uh, their organizations, um, the pressures and pleasures, uh, the bribes and intimidations to get people to submit to uh, uh, the new world order, so to speak, right? <clears throat> um, so that's going on in the background, this war in, the war in heaven. But what's really happening, we need to bring ourselves into, grab a hold of ourselves for a second. It seems like some fiery tribulations overtaken us, but we're not to be dismayed. Uh, we're being assembled, the body is being assembled for an upcoming dominion. We're going to have dominion, it says, right? It says it, it means it, for a thousand years on this planet. Um, that's a beautiful thing. So we're being assembled. Now there, there will be a, a really bitter three and a half year time period, maybe a little more than that, um, uh, in between now, somewhere in between now and when our dominion starts. but be assured we are being assembled for dominion and we'll get in more into that we're going to talk about the new moon that's coming up uh, the eclipse that's coming up on the same day the jupiter venus conjunction on the same day and the first anniversary of the first ascension all on the same day the same day the precision of the scriptures on this um, are what inspires our believing because it's the scriptures, it's the ancient writings that have been declared to us that um, uh, give us an empirical source of information that transcends the otherwise postmodernism, the existentialism, the nihilism, and the outright um, just darkness of living on earth in, without knowledge of truth and without love for God and from God. So that's what we're going to study. The enemy is ready, is readying, is ready to devour, as it says in Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. And the wrath that is coming is not the, the death and the carnage and the horrible things that happen, just like they're happening now. They're not from our Heavenly Father. God gets a bad rap, courtesy of the devil, courtesy of the liar and the liar in chief. He's not the father of death. The devil's the author of death, right? And the but the wrath that the the uh, the lamb comes back with is the fire and the sword of the mouth of the words of the truth of our speaking of our stand of our assembly of our commitment. So let's get into it. Um, I'm going to bring you back to you remember. There's 15 sessions before this session. And we, don't, we can't go back all the way back to the Revelation 12 sign and do that one again. If you haven't, if you're not deeply familiar with the Revelation 12 sign, you've got to become familiar with it. Go back to the first few videos where we, we, we delved into that very intensely. Um, so moving forward, what, we're, what we left off with in our last sessions is what we're facing now. Coming up on May the 1st of this year, is uh, several things. There's a Jupiter-Venus conjunction outside of Pisces, uh, beneath the symbol of the, uh, between Pisces and the symbol of the adversary below. Uh, but the Jupiter-Venus conjunctions are, are profound. Uh, every time they seem to happen, um, they're symbols of, they're basically rapture signs because in the book of Revelation, Revelation 12 sign, Revelation 12, 1 through 5, the, um, the child was caught up to heaven to be with in the throne room with God at the birth. Okay, so the birth and the child and, and the Messiah, us, the, the Messiah corporately uh, and the body, are born 
and Jupiter is a sign of the body, and Venus is a sign of the bright morning star. So that's Jupiter and Venus in conjunction on May the 1st. Uh, a symbol, so it's okay, that's kind of interesting, but but it's not just that. There's several things that happen that, that you, let's look at them. Also on that day, we're going into the new moon, which is a uh, about a 12, 14 hour affair in the skies from man's visible um, perspective. Um, and when it pops, the new moon uh, is also that day is a uh, partial solar eclipse over South America. It's, f it's full over South America. <laughs> if you're in South America, you're going to see a full solar eclipse that day. So um, not delving into the significance of South America seeing it, uh, that's where it is. And um, it is it is a solar eclipse. Solar eclipses are omens, uh, harbingers for the world. Lunar eclipses are harbingers, omens for the uh, church of the uh, uh, of the, the Judean church, right? The Jews. So maybe it's fitting that this scene over South America is a sign of this, certainly not Israel, is it? Um, but it's also a new moon. Now new moons, um, when they crescent, it's a sign of, um, it's a prophecy, it's a fulfillment of the prophecy, it's a metaphor to the prophecy of, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. Uh, because when the, when, the, when the reflection of the moon part peeks out behind that dark spot and it pops out and you see it, there's that twinkling of an eye. Um, and there's several of the reasons why the new moon is, the new moon always is the blowing of a trumpet to symbolize. So the new moon is a very um, important uh, watch day. Uh, every day is a high watch day, as we know, for the rapture. Uh, so are we studying watch dates? Yes, every day. Today is a watch day. And if it's not today, it's tomorrow. And addition, above every day, a heightened watch day is every new moon. And above every new moon is every festival. And every other uh, uh, new moon day that happens to be uh, 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 coinciding with a Jupiter-Venus conjunction makes it even more special. Um, so another thing is that that day is um, um, not only a solar eclipse, not only a new moon, the Jupiter Venus conjunction. There's a couple other things that it is too. It also lines up with all the major planets are all in line on that day on May the 1st. Uh, Uranus, the Sun, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, um, Mars uh, is right there, standing in the way Mars, Michael, the, the Archangel of, you know, stands and fights for God's people in conflict. So it's kind of an interesting spectacle that they're all lined up on May the 1st on that new moon. But there's several other, there's a couple of other very important things and we're going to look at them. But let me take you back for a second to help you understand this. I'm not going to go all the way back. I do want to remind you of, of the prophecy about the, there's a seven year prophecy that the, um, the uh, Antichrist would make a prophet, make a prophet, make a, um, a covenant uh, th through Israel uh, with many nations. Um, and that covenant would last for seven years. Okay, that's interesting. And there's also Daniel's 70th week, which is, as we know, is seven years. Those two seven year time periods um, may be identical. Um, they may not be, but nonetheless, we ended up in 2020 through a lot of other work in the fall of 2020. We've talked about this in other videos, um, three distinct dates. One is September 18th, which is the Feast of Trumpets. One is September 23rd, which is the day that Israel made its COVID covenant and started, uh, uh injecting, uh, it, the entire nation. They led the world in lockdown. They led the world in submission, they led the world in injections with uh, with, uh, <laughs> with very questionable substances, right? And um, so that covenant, covenant date that they announced, the Knesset officially announced it on the 24th, reflecting what they did on the 23rd, um, which was actually interesting because that was three years after the original Revelation 12 sign of on September 23rd, 2017. No, the matter. But there's three dates. One's Feast of Trumpets, one's the Covenant date, 
and the last one was Shemini Atzeret on 10-10. So those three dates were all really good candidates for a seven-year time period because all three of them ended up being, and I don't know which one of them is, maybe one of them is the seven-year uh, beginning of the, uh, the seven-year COVID covenant. Maybe another one is a seven-year period for the um, uh, Daniel 70th week. But no matter what, we know that in the scripture, uh, in the middle of that time period, uh, is um, is the midpoint. It's, it's uh, from that point from which 1260 days are, th are times times time and a half or three and a half years um, uh, is measured. And that's where the Revelation 12 sign comes in because it says that's when the dragon falls, the dragon falls, and then he persecutes the, uh, the, the child is caught up to the throne uh, when the dragon falls. And that could be a reflection of, of the rapture happening at that point. I hope we don't have to wait that long. But nonetheless, it's accounted for at that spot. The dragon is ready and, at the time when it says, and then at that point. Now, is there a lag between the time when the dragon falls and the child is caught up and that the persecution starts for 1260 days? Could be. That's why we're backing up to here. But before I explain, and by the way, we'll look at this, but these two stars here represent midpoints of three and a half years um, from that point till these end points when the seven years would end. These begin on festival dates, Feast of Trumpets and Shemini Atzeret, and they end on Feast of Trumpets and Shemini Atzeret and Sukkot on this one. So they're all the fall festivals are perfectly called in. They're also called in within the fulfillment of our understanding. We may have a wrong doctrine when it comes to the understanding about the um, uh, um, this generation shall not pass. Uh, when you see the fig tree blossom, starting with when Israel started as a nation on May the 14th of, of uh, 1948, taking you forward to 70 years, 80 years to uh, of, of a generation, this generation shall not to, to May the 14th of 2020. 28, but which is um, in the spring, and if you're going to, you got to back it up to the fall, if you're going to have them fulfilled and begin and end in fall festivals, which is a pretty, you know, doesn't have to be that way, but it's interesting that this all fits, nonetheless. So, okay, well, wh 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 where are we at now? Here's where we're at, here's what we're going to talk about today in large, um, starting, but what we have here is these references to 437 days. And the 437 days was, was the fact that the uh, scriptures say that unless the days be shortened, uh, unless the Messiah shortened the days, no flesh should be saved. Oh, well, how did he shorten the days? He shortened the days, as you recall from the earlier videos, you can go back and watch these. The days were shortened because the Messiah would come at the beginning of the uh, 70th week, which is a seven year time period. So he was on, and so that 70th week, that seven year time period, some portion of it is attributed to when he began. Well, his baptism, beginning his ministry, was on February 16th of 27 AD, and it ended when he was cut off per prophecy on April 28th, which is 437 days. So that 437 days is a credit. For all of your 484 out of the 490 years, or the 70 times 7, and part of 480, the 85th year from this baptism to when he was cut off. So that's a credit towards the 70 weeks. So that again, the 70 weeks are the, seven, the, the 70th, the Daniel 70th week, the seven years, started somewhere off with these three time periods, either either the either a Feast of Trumpets, the COVID Covenant date, or Shemini Answer, because all three of them land perfectly in fulfillment on seven year time periods. So we measure the 437 days and, and one of them um, landed on, began with Feast of Trumpets, and that's the one that also ends on Sukkot, which is Tabernacles, but nonetheless, um, 
And if we attributed that 437 days, well, we went, we went, got to 1129.21. We thought, well, maybe that's it. Maybe that's when the rapture would happen. Well, it didn't happen. It didn't happen there. It didn't happen on December the 4th, and it didn't happen on December 21st. So we went forward. However, you may remember that in uh, the Gospels, uh, as after Jesus had um, uh, um, um, resurrected and he was visiting with uh, the disciples, made one of his many appearances with his disciples, they were fishing and he told them they weren't catching anything. He told them to pull, throw their nets out. Again, they said, oh, okay, we will. They threw the nets out. And the scriptures recorded that to their amazement, uh, and contrary to their sense knowledge and their knowledge of fishing, that they went, they pulled out a, more fish, that their nets broke, it was so much, the harvest was so big. And for some reason, God had them record the number of fish. He says there was 153 fish. Okay, he wanted us to know 153 fish for what reason? He could have said a lot of fish. No, he record, so there's a reason. And so he either wanted us to know 153 fish for uh, some sort of meaningless superficial reason, or some people believe that it was a sign that there was 153 days of harvest, uh, uh, final notice, okay, uh, from the time that uh, the days were shortened until the final uh, count. Uh, these are days of harvesting. Fish are harvested, right? They harvested the fish. People are fish are harvested, right? That's our mission, right? Because we're being assembled, right? Um, what's the title of this one? Assembling the body, right? So um, that 153 days from 1129.21, which was the day the art door shut, when you work the word on that, the word's very clear about what month it is. It's a little bit of a matter of interpretation, whether it was the 29th or it was the um, 21st, but um, there's an eight day difference between those two interpretations. But this is the understanding and the interpretation that it was the 29th, not because there was eight days. So when the rain started, either all the animals miraculously got on in one day and, um, and then they shut the door or the rain started, it took them eight days, and then they shut the and then the door was shut. So nonetheless, um, eight days is always a day. Of, eight is always a day, a time of purification. So um, ceremonial ceremonial cleansing before a transition. So um, it's a new beginning. Anyway, there's a. 153 days from there until what? Until this May 1st date that we just looked at. So that's the 153 final fish day. So you got the Jupiter Venus conjunction, you got the solar eclipse, you got the new moon, which is always a great high watch day because no man knows the day or hour that new moon will be seen because two witnesses got to go out to see it. And when they both come back having seen it, whether it was clouds or whatever, no man knows, but then they declare it and they blow a, tr a trumpet blows at the sound of the last trump. Dead and Christ shall rise first. We which remain shall be caught up together with the Lord. Shall it be, so shall we forever be with the Lord in the air, right? So shall we ever be with the Lord. And it's also 153 days. So that's four big things that all happen on May the 1st. But there's two more big things that happen on May the 1st. So, so have fun. Here we go. So, um, okay. So here we go. On April the 1st of this year was Nisan 1. Okay. That's the, that's the first new moon, first crescent new moon. Uh, was 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 the, after this uh, spring equinox is the is the uh, first day of Nisan is the day after that, so the day they see the crescent, the next day is the first of the month. Great empirical uh, objective uh, determination of that very important count marker date that God gave us, because He says fourteen days later is Nisan 14, of course, you count from 1 to 14, and in this case you get to Nisan, which is April the 16th, that's today, and that's Passover, this is the day that our Lord was crucified, 
that his D perfect DNA and blood were broken. That breakage was, was marked on his DNA, and, and yet it was restored when he was resurrected. And now when we get that new birth seed DNA within us, we get the same eternal life that his seed has. So it's always been all about seed, but that's another matter. So, he, but he died uh, on April, on Passover, on Nisan 14. He was crucified, uh, he was hung at nine and, and, and died at three. They had, uh, at, the, at the ninth hour, he cried, Eli, Eli, Lamana Sabachthani, for, my God, my God, why was I set aside? For this purpose was I spared. For this purpose was I set aside. And he gave, and he died. And sunset that day was going to be, um, is the end of the day, the beginning of the next day, or the niece on the 15th. And that was the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, a, a Sabbath. And they had to get him in the ground uh, for, since you can't touch a dead person after, or else you're unclean. So they had, they, they had to get him buried before 6 p.m., which they did. So that was, uh, he was buried on Nisan the 14th, just at the very last minute. And they had to be in the ground for three days and three nights. So you go, you go all of the 17th, all of the 18th, which is the second day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and all of the 19th, excuse me, all this, uh, yeah, all this, all the 17th, excuse me, well, of April, let me get these correct. Nice on the 14th. So Nice on the 15th, he, he was in all the 15th, all the 16th, all the 17th. When did the 17th end? It ends at sunset on, or, or at 6 p.m. on the 17th. And, and then it was the early the next morning on Nice on the 18th when the, rec the recorded events uh, because it was early in the morning. If it was early in the previous morning, he wasn't. He would. He wouldn't have fulfilled the three days and three nights. So very clear, very simple. So it was very early the next morning when Mary came along and uh, you know had the recorded experiences, which we're going to look at. Uh, so that morning resurrection appearance, w w which is on our calendar, is April 21 and. 22. We say 21 or 22 because, again, their day begins and ends with 6 o'clock, and ours begins and ends with midnight. So uh, you actually cover um, um, 18 hours of, of one day and 6 hours of another day on our calendar to cover one day on the Hebrew calendar. So hence, that's why we have the two days referenced there. And then um, there's other events that happen on the 19th. Uh, there's several events happened on the 18th, which we're going to look at. And then on the 19th, um, um, there was um, se several events that happened. Uh, and and it's, some of them happened on the night of the 18th after sunset. And that, so after sunset, it's clearly the 19th, and, and he appears to the disciples and Tom, without Thomas. Oops. And Thomas was not there. Okay, so and then and then it goes on. To, let's go back now. Let's look at a couple things. Uh, um, the Nisan 18th Resurrection Day appearances. Let's just look. Jesus on John John 20 17. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. This is Mary. She shows up at the tomb. Touch me not, for I'm not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren. He tells him. Okay, don't touch me. Okay, because I'm not yet ascended. And okay, noted. Luke twenty four thirteen. And behold, two of them went that same day. This is the road to that same day. Nice on the eighteenth, the resurrection appearances day, to a village called Emmaus, which was just about three score furlongs, which is about seven and a half miles. So it's a pretty good clip. You know, you you're walking seven and a half miles, and so you get out there a seven and a half mile walk. That's a pretty clip. You know, it's a you know how long does it take you to walk? A couple hours, right? And um, but and then in verse 29 of Luke 24, but they constrained because Jesus came along and remember, and, he, and they said, "Come on, stay with us for it's towards evening." And they, they didn't recognize him. It's not, so it's getting late in the day. It's getting towards clearly towards evening. Noted. And the day is far spent. Noted. And he went to tarry. We went to wait. This is on the evening on the 18th, at, and on the, at nightfall it turns to the 19th. Verse 20, uh, 33. And they rose up after he revealed himself. To, and they rose up the same hour, and they returned to Jerusalem. And they found the same hour, and they reached seven and a half miles, and, and they found the eleven 
gathered together and them that were with them. So 64 long, about seven and a half miles. So it's night. It's night. It's probably after six o'clock. It's probably the 19th. Um, whichever it is, it's it's going into the night. They probably didn't just go there for 10 minutes. Okay, want to tell you, and we're gone now, and, and it's still the 18th. No, so we're, we're talking about something going into the 19th. <clears throat> and um, so then John 20, 19, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, uh, when the doors were shut, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace unto you. And Thomas was not with him in verse 24. Interesting. Okay. So Thomas was not there. Nobody touched him. Jesus told Mary not to touch him. There's no indication anybody's touched him. And so I want to bring up to you a reminder. There are many numerous references in the, um, what we call it the Old Testament, in the ancient writings, of eight day time periods referenced for ceremonial cleansing, new beginning. This is a serious thing. We're going to wait eight days. One of them is, is circumcision. It's pretty, you know, when you circumcise, it's not, okay, we're going to get our child circumcised for whatever it's tradition. No, it's, it had a profound meaning. It was the original way of God saying, wake up. You're going to walk with me. You're going to be aware of your creator. You're not going to be asleep and stupid all your life. You're going to be my people and you're going to be awake, and you're going to be circumcised. You're going to be set apart. You're going to be different. And so, yeah, they, they did. They circumcised the foreskin as a, as a sign. Um, but be that, you can talk to God about that when you see him. Why did you pick the <laughs> circumcise that thing? <laughs> Why couldn't we? But nonetheless, that's what they did. And so the eight days that it says that in John 20, 26, and after eight days. Why did he say after the eight days? He just said a week, a week or so later, then later on. No, they declared, anytime God tells something, he te there's a purpose for everything God says, everything he says, when he says it, why he says it, how he says it, where he says it, to whom he says it, all has a purpose. So the eight days had a purpose. I believe that the purpose is because Jesus, when he was born from the dead, had to wait eight days of, of, of additional purification because he was the firstborn from the dead. He was the first, he was newborn. And anytime somebody was circumcised apart to be set apart for God, and that's a pretty big setting apart, Jesus, he, God raised him up from the dead. Other people had been raised from the dead, you know. Um, Lazarus had been raised from the dead, okay. And, but they died again later. But um, the resurrection of the dead was important, but the circumcision on the eighth day into the ascension before God, test me not for I'm not yet ascended, I'm going to wait eight days, Thomas was not with them, okay? So, um, but then later, um, okay, John 28, Thomas, and then after eight days, hold on, let me finish this. And Thomas and Luke 20, and it came to pass while well, he blessed them. That later on it says, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and he carried up into heaven. Now that statement, it came to pass while he blessed them. And it came to pass. Now, was, did he actually ascend on that day? I'm just putting that out there because I don't want to confuse the issue. Uh, he may have. I don't know. Um, I think that it's possible that there was ascension, there was an ascension then, or maybe that he was, he, he was carried up into heaven, but he didn't ascend all the way to the throne of God. But nonetheless, it, it's, it's, it's mitigated a little bit by a fact, and it came to pass, which makes it sound like, well, it didn't have to be right then, that same day, which is all on the same day, the same day towards the evening, the same hour, right? 
it, it came to pass the same day evening there it is again right it came to pass while he was well, you, that event is also that type of event is also as you'll see on in acts 1 2 where he's blessing him and he's caught up so this could be in john referring ahead to what's covered in acts we don't we don't really know but i'm going to say it could be either but i'm also going to say here for the purpose of the discussion i'm going to say that that's a future event and that ends the first day appearances that's the first day now at, then it goes on to say john 20 after eight days his disciples were inside kind of afraid and thomas was with them this time then came jesus after eight days so we got the first day on the 18th and then we got eight days later jesus showing up very clear perfect you can count those days out stood in the mist peace unto you and, and then verse 20, Thomas, reach, touch me, go ahead and touch me. Reach your hand, touch me, thrust to your side, be not faithless, believing. Wow. I mean, wow. Uh, yeah, think about that. Um, the necessity, the biological, scientific, medical, genetic necessity for our DNA to be restored through the process of the Messiah taking on our brokenness which he didn't he had perfect genetics he would have lived forever he had perfect genes his genes were all dominant his he was created inside of mary right i will put him into between thy seed and her seed her seed being him back in genesis so genesis 3 15. so that perfect dna we got and he's saying you know touch me you know go ahead and touch me now if I was, he had ascended by that time so the so again, this is eight days later, and then Acts one two, it says until the day in which he was taken up, which is forty days later, forty days from when they first saw him, from the eighteenth till forty days later, which we're going to look at, until the day after that he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the disciples, apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also showed himself alive, after his passion, by many infallible proofs. Infallible proofs, baby. Being seen of them 40 days, he saw that dead guy's alive again. Wow, that means something. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and when he had spoken these, they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. This end of the 40 days is the classic and final ascension. If the 40 days began on the 18th and 19th of Nisan, then the new moon of the June 1st would be the ascension day. Let's look at that again. Day one is, is uh, Nisan 1, April the 2nd, 3rd. Nisan 14, 14 days later, April 16th, 7th, crucified. In the ground for three days, which is, which is uh, 15, 16, 17, uh, on the 18th, early morning, they come, because uh, it's from dusk to dusk, from 6 o'clock till 6 o'clock. Then so he's, he's sometime between 6 o'clock that night uh, of, this, uh, of the 17th, which begins the 18th, and the early morning of the 18th Mary comes along finds him the resurrection appearance on April the 21st 22nd of for us a couple of days from now and then the, that that 18th there's several things happened the road to Emmaus the appearances uh, to, the, to the disciples without Thomas and then okay there's your timeline there's your new moon and then eight more days later which is the 23rd the 24th 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th. That's eight days. 30th of what? 30th of April. Well, that's after eight more days. Well, what's happening on the on that day? Well, we just got through what, saw, seeing what was happening. What happened on the eighth day is um, uh, Thomas was was there, and I, I, I have ascended by now. He ha, he has done his ascension, because uh, touch me not, I've, I've not ascended. Touch me, Thomas, I've ascended. So the, the, there was an ascension event here. And what else is on that day? There's a new moon. Oh my goodness. A new moon. Oh my gosh, what else? Oh my gosh, what else? There's a Jupiter-Venus conjunction on that day, a symbol of the body and the head of the Messiah in conjunction. Oh my gosh, there's also a solar eclipse that day. Also, Mars is standing there in the sideline. This is a big event in the war if the rapture were to happen. All the major planets are visible. 
Um, so the eight-day ceremonial cleansing before the circumcision, before the ascension, the giving, the isolation, the coming into union with um, and your dedication of yourself consciously, willfully to being aware, to loving your creator, receiving the love of God that you might be made whole. This eight-day ceremonial cleansing before this circumcision and the offerings to our Father are extremely well established throughout Scripture. Extremely. Jesus told Mary not to touch him, for he had not yet ascended. But then just over eight days later, he tells Thomas to touch him, for he must have ascended. Powerful. All these things happening on May the 1st. So we got this looking, looking forward to us coming up. That's 153 days from the day the ark closed. The day the ark closed was what? It was 437 shortened days from the Feast of Trumpets when the seven-year time period could be fulfilled within the scope and symmetrically within all the time counts of Scripture of, of, of seven years, 2,520 days, with a perfect midpoint, a midpoint that's exactly 1260 days uh, on both the seven-year calendar and the 1200 and the 2520 day calendar. The 2520 day calendar is marked by uh, the heavenly sign. The seven-year calendar is marked by um, Passover. Profound, profound symmetries, profound symmetries. I'm not quite sure what to make of it. But let's continue. The April 30 new moon and May 1st is the, also the first day of the second month. Oh yeah, it would be because the first day of the first month was Nissan 1, which was back on April the 1st, right? Well, 30 days later is the first day of the second month. What happens on the first day of the second month? In Numbers 1, and the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. This is after 40 years of trial and tribulation. Well, they had escaped from the, the uh, Egyptians, the, the, the New World Order, right? And in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, take all of the people, take the assembly, you know, and the families that are able to go forth to war, gather them. Oops, I don't know how that happened. And so they, they assembled. And on the first day of the second month, they declared all their pedigrees. They said, oh, what's our pedigree? We got, the pedig we got a pedigree, don't we? We're born again of incorruptible seed, right? By the word of God, which, which lives and abides forever. We've got the greatest pedigree on the planet. All of you are my brothers and sisters, right? I'm your brother. You're my brothers and sisters. And those who we still might have the patience to hunt, under those whose sins we retain, they shall be retained. Under those whose sins we remit, they will be re That's interesting. Under whose, whose sins, whose dysfunction, whose darkness. Sins is like darkness, dysfunction, stupidity, ignorance, certainly uh, spiritual depravity. Enemies of God, <laughs> enemies of, by, by, by wicked works. That's the sin. But under whose sin, that dysfunction that we retain, we say, I'm, I'm not going to mess with you. You're messed up. Or I'm not going to mess with you. You've got, you're wearing your mask. Or, uh, you know, you're, 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 just, you're, 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 you're hopeless. You're a zombie. You know? No. You ho you, you'll retain it. It's up to you. And to, under whose sins, whose dysfunction you remit, they shall be remitted. Anyway, that's the war. That's the war. It's a war for souls, right? And so they it's a war for DNA. It's a, re, re, a war for genetic redemption. When one soul, one person's gene genes are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Um, sealed forever. Uh, you can't even begin to comprehend. You have to stop and think. You have to meditate. You'll have to spend some time repenting and praying and getting your stupidity out of your head to comprehend the greatness of eternity. And what it actually means is not just a concept. Yes, yeah, it's a 
possible biblical kind. Yeah, that's, that's an idea. I'm intellectual. I know it's way beyond intellectual. It's either a great, profound, tectonic reality in all of eternity, or it's nothing. Um, so on the first day of the second month, they declared their pedigrees and from 20 and upward, ready to go to war by their poles. So it's another interesting thing about the first day of the second month. Um, Moses, after 40 years of tribulation, trial and tribulation in the Sinai, in the wilderness, said, get ready, first day of second month. What's the first day of the second month? Oh yeah, it's May the 1st this year, May the 1 of 22. And it's got a new moon, it's got a solar eclipse, it's got a Jupiter-Venus conjunction, it's 153 days from the 437 days into the uh, seven-year time period, which could rep well represent the, sh the, the shortening, unless the days be shortened, no flesh would be saved. It's the final 153-day count. Very possible. Very possible. But then it goes on to say, being seen in them 40 days, 40 days from when? From the first time they saw him. They saw him on the 18th and 19th and Nisan. Okay. <clears throat> and it came to pass. While well, he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried to heaven. And um, But 40 days later is the final ascension, regardless. Whether it's whether that, um, that ascension is, because it does say here, he saw him 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, it says, and when he had spoken these things, they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud received by This end of 40 days is the classic and final ascension. It also is on a new moon. The 40 days began on the 18th, 19th of Nisan, and you count it forward, and you get to that beautiful crescent new moon and the spectacular possibility of us going up. That's what those up arrows mean. We go up. We go up. Um, possibly. It certainly matches. The symmetry is there. If it doesn't happen, I'll keep waiting. It could be the next day, right? And a, or the day after that. So that's a very beautiful thing. Um, now, while we're wrapping this up, Pentecost is two 50 consecutive day counts from the second day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And also always lands on a new moon. So while we're going into the, uh, because I'm not dealing with um, the high watch day. I believe um, today is a high watch day, pass, Passover. And I think three days later uh, on, the, what do we say, the 21st, 22nd is also going to be, is that right? 21st, 22nd? Let's double check that again. Um, yeah, 21, 22, April 21, 22 is, um, is, is, is also a high watch day, resurrection day. But other, other uh, teachers have covered those already. And I'm watching. I'm also watching, and I think we should be watching, as I said, um, the, um, uh, uh, the the first ascension, which is after eight days. Uh, there is a slight possibility it was on the 22nd as well, because, and it came to pass, like I said, here on Luke 2451, while he blessed them. He, that could refer to it, that he did that thing, but we know he did it over here. I can say, I tend to believe, I just show this in fairness, uh, being intellectually honest about it, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, but I do know that everything else matches, because it just declares after 40 days this happened. He was blessing him very clearly, and he went up. But we also know by eight days, uh, eight days after the 19th of Nisan, after the 22nd of April, <clears throat> on the 30th of May and the 1st of uh, 30th of April and the 1st of May, uh, Thomas was told to touch him and that because Jesus had ascended, which gives us eight days of ceremonial cleansing after the uh, 18th, 19th, um, carrying that forward to the 30th, um, we'll, we'll, to the 29th. So, so he's ceremonial clean here and tells Thomas to touch him. Ceremonial clean here could ascend on the 29th, and Thomas, uh, touch me, Thomas, I've ascended, okay? So I guess technically this arrow might maybe best be moved over a little bit because he tells Thomas to touch him on the 30th after eight days, right? 
26, that's four, 27, 28, 29, 30, yeah, right, 30 days. So the 30th of May, so that little arrow could theoretically be moved over a little bit. Nonetheless, so Pentecost is 250 consecutive to count days. So if you count from the April 19th, let's go back again one more time. The first day of, of, of unleavened bread is the 18th because he was in the ground, had to be in, in, in the ground, excuse me, is the 18th of April, is the 15th of Nisan. And the 16th of Nisan is, um, um, is, uh, is the second day of, of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. If, if the 16th of Nisan, that makes the 19th of Nisan, a uh, 19th of April, the 16th of Nisan. So the 19th of April, and you count for it 100 days, two 50-day counts, and the scripture said, of course, tear you in Jerusalem when the day of Pentecost was fully come, fully come. Pentecost just means a 50-day count. It means 50. And, um, and there's, feasts for, uh, there's feasts for 50 days for wheat and wine and oil and water. And um, so when the feast, the summer wheat har is harvested in July, in latter summer. And the phrase, these were not drunk with new wine, as you might suppose, on the day of Pentecost, is also refer reference to the summer, uh, the late summer uh, harvest. It's also it's a clue that the upcoming great wine harvest was at the end of summer. So July 28th is exactly 100 days from April 19th, the second day of the Feast of Unleavened. Again, perfection at work. <laughs> perfection at work, a hundred perfect days land you again on a new moon in the twinkling of an eye, the trumpet blowing, uh, no man knows the day or hour, okay, it's all right there, and there it is, the July 28th phase of the moon, is that's the new moon, and um, so the 28th, 29th of July, when the moon crescents that, around that time period, will be uh, Pentecost, which will be the next high watch date, um, the point is, is that, um, you know, we've gone, if, that's the main thing about this today, but I, I want to bring you back for just a second to the greater, bigger picture here of the seven years. And um, this is a pernicious topic, yes. It's subject to um, some emotion. Um, and um, a lot of dogma, a lot of, tra a lot of traditional teachings, a lot of orthodoxy. And I'm not going to be here, uh, thus saith the Lord, <laughs> telling you that uh, the seven years started in fall of 2020. I'm just saying it fits. Of course, the implication of that is that this, we can be in the seven year time period now which contradicts the idea that, oh, no, you can't be in any of the seven-year period because the rapture has to happen before the seven years even starts, um, which tends to negate um, the scripture when it says at the midpoint that um, the adversary is, is, what's it say, what's that title? Uh, the enemy is ready to devour. He was ready to devour, and the enemy seems ready to devour now. Uh, getting more ready every day, isn't he? But um, ready to devour, and then at that moment, when we go up, he comes down, third of his tail draws a third of the stars, and the persecution really starts. The child is caught up to the throne, that's us. The woman the, runs to the wilderness, flees to the wilderness, is, is nourished um, off the, on the wings of an eagle, is, is nourished. Um, for three and a half years. So that three and a half years is um, marked by 322.24. 322.24 is this day right here, which is the midpoint uh, of a 2520 day count and ends on uh, the Feast of Trumpets 2027. Within the 80 year, this generation shall not pass limitations. And, and it's marked by this profound, beautiful uh, event, which we've talked about before, 
This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. No, it's not the dawning of the age of Aquarius. That's an orthodox teaching of man, a doctrine and commandment of men, <laughs> a lie. It's this symbol is not about some beautiful, wonderful thing being ushered in the new world order. It's the exact opposite. This is a symbol. All the star names and meanings and the three deacons around it are all about the coming wrath and pouring out the bowls of wrath. And um, and Venus and Saturn, Venus the bright and morning star, and Satan, Hashitan, Satan, are in the mid, are in the in conflict, in, in in the heart of that on that day perfectly. So there's a and Mars is right there in the in the, the loins in the commitment area of the whole process in the in this war of uh, uh, of uh, of the of the bearer of the water bearer of of Aquarius, right? It's not God didn't name him Aquarius, man did, right? Um, so, um, quite interesting, right? Um, so, um, the bigger picture I've just wanted to summarize is that, um, we're looking at high watch days. We're, we're in this time period right here. The May 1st end right, ends right here. And then we've got, after that, we've got j basically June 1st. Uh, which I already showed you is um, 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 it's not Pentecost. It was uh, what was it? Darn it! <laughs> it was um, oh yeah, this yeah, it was the Ascension Day. Of course, yeah, it was the Ascension. So so June first is the Ascension, and that'd be a great day for us to go up. And uh, and then Pentecost, which was uh, the next that is uh, what would I say? It was um july 28th so june yeah june 1st then july 28th and then we get to the midpoint but then we got to go through all of 23 and spring of 24 the very early spring of 24 and by then we're at the midpoint and, and if we, we we would have to be raptured out somewhere between now and then because uh, because that's when the wrath really starts we're not appointed to wrath uh, it does say that we will experience tribulation in our life, but it never says we're pointed out. And I've always been a quote pre-tribber in my in all my life. Uh, it's only until re until I saw this that I, you know, I'm I'm entertaining the possibility that we might be. I mean, we're going through some kind of nightmarish hell already, are we not? And I'd rather go through it and get something out of it than go through it and get nothing out of it. No, I mean, I've got to go through all this and then the, and then the seven years has still got to start. So it would be nice to know that the seven years has started and that we're, we're, we're this close. We're, we're coming into this right here. And then, and then the, you know, like I said, then, the, then the, uh, the, the May one, the June one, then the, the, uh, the July, August one, uh, which was Pentecost. So we got uh, the, the Ascension uh and then the real ascension the final ascension 40 days later on anyway i just want you to see that the time period here between between now may 1 of 21 when all these fantastic things happen and may 1 of uh, uh of 22 and then 30 more days and then the next new moon uh uh or is that two moons that whatever whatever it was I don't want to get hung up on it. Point is, that's going to be July of 22. And from July 22 all the way through, we got to go through the fall festivals. I mean, I haven't got any more symmetries to look at at that point. These ones that we're look, coming into right now are, um, this one especially on May 1 is pretty significant. I think the other, I, I always like Ascension Days. I always like Resurrection Days. Uh, of course, all the fall festivals days are like, I, lo I like every day for a rupture day. Um, but they're all exciting, and this timeline fits. Uh, we've got uh, Passover here for this midpoint, and we've got that heavenly sign on this midpoint. And between now and um, the 322.24, there's a couple other events that come up in um, uh, in in um, not too many. There's only a few. 23 is pretty pretty quiet. Uh, pretty naked of, of, of events in the skies and the symmetries from what I know right now. And, but we certainly have a lot of action on the ground, don't we? The consolidation of the beast system, 
the financial organism, the, 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 the digital currency, which is going to lead to ID 2020, which is going to lead to more to absolute totalitarianism and the tracking and monitoring um, and surveillance of every human being, whether it's genetically with something inserted in our body or whether it's a chip or whether it's uh, just digitally with your card or something. I don't know. We, we know uh, what we have read about um, marks and in the hand and forehead and things like that and what those might mean. But uh, this is not the subject of this. The point is, is that we've got um, time for more ripening because the, the symbol, the, the purpose of this uh, video was the body is assembling for, for our dominion, not to be dominated, but for us to have dominion. We're being called out of here. We are going to be snatched away. Uh, we are going to be rescued. We are going to escape. All those phrases are used. And, and they're prophesied. And the child is caught up to heaven. And then the adversary comes down a third of his tail. The, the, the tails draw a third of the stars. The persecution really gets intense that last three and a half years. For 1260 days, the, the remnant, the woman that gave birth to the child, uh, the corporate body of... It is the, 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 the Nazarene, the tribulation saints, those that are left behind, good people. God loves everybody. He's not a God of wrath. He's trying to save everybody. He's not willing that any flesh should be uh, uh, missed. What, that all should be spared. Right down to, even in the millennial reign, there's still the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. If there's healing that needs to be done, there's people that need to be healed. So um, we are going to win this. We're being assembled for dominion. We're going to be out of here. Those whose sins, those whose dysfunction we retain, can't mess with you, they're going to be retained. It's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to us. Just by do everything, little thing you can. And those whose... Those who we remit by teaching, exhorting, inspiring, training, working with, explaining, caring about, trying, those who we remit, they shall be remitted. They will, they will get sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Meanwhile, the, the enemy ready, readies to devour. He's certainly ready. That's most everything, everybody. Hey, much love. God bless. Um, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, may God uh, have mercy and, and grace and abundance on us all. And may we uh, continue to stay, be awake, stay awake, stand strong, put on the whole armor of God, and let's uh, march forward and finish this thing out.